All right, introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Rich. And what do you got there? I have my old, old Bob Long's Cocker from Ironman 2 team. Cool. And looks like somebody scratched out your name on the I'm side. I'm hugely popular in the paintball community, so someone was nice enough to re remove my name from the side of it, yeah. <laughs> so when you think you received that marker from Bob, was it a sponsorship or did you have to buy it? It was both sponsorship and I had to buy it. You know, we were playing for him, but we still had to buy the guns. Yeah. I don't have any idea when, sorry. Yeah, probably but, like 95, 96. Yeah, he, I'm sure he knows or someone else knows. I'm just yeah. horrible with timelines. Gunshot amazing though for a long time, stole a lot of souls. So you were playing on Iron Man 2 with that? Yeah. What point did you go from Iron Man 2 to Iron Man 1? Um, I played with Bobby for, I think two or three seasons after this. Yeah. And then uh, went from there to the LA Iron Man. Went from there to the LA Iron Man. Yeah. So as long as you were playing with Bob Long's Iron Man, you were using that gun. Yeah, pretty much. They were using the bushies at the end, but I wasn't too into it. So the I Defiance? Just, uh, the Bush, yeah, Bushmaster, whatever yeah. Defiance, yeah. yeah. And you were telling me yesterday how you guys were out of Fresno or Modesto. Modesto, yeah. And you would go every weekend to Every Maryland. weekend, yeah. Me, Greg, uh, Taylor, Ronnie, a couple of the guys would drive from Modesto all the way to Vallejo, which is about two and a half hours each way, so five hours a day, ten hours a weekend, yeah, and just kind of game plan on the way up there and talk about what we did well and didn't do so well on the way back yeah, and yeah. why we lost so much and, and with about in about six months of that of getting smashed every weekend we were going about 50 50 with the ironman so we were doing good awesome you saw this gun before and it was for sale on ebay you don't know who had it you don't know what happened to it after you had it no. you think you sold it you think it was stolen from you what i think you i sold it to a guy a local guy yeah yeah and then I he was just like the guy who's or screw the guy who sold this to me i'm gonna scratch his name out yeah i was i played on the this is my name that was on the side yep tell me a little bit about the parts that were on there it's pretty much like you saw it not these grips i think it just had a unireg on it same barrel i think it was longer though hydro bolt i don't have that gap but it's pretty much as it is now man yeah yeah i put the stabilizer in the bottom line stuff yeah on because i mean this is a better reg so that's good tell me a little bit about the hydro bolt that's on there pull it out let's see it the Hydra bolt, it, was, uh, it basically just had three different heads, so you can change the different heads. But there was a little bit lag in the way it came back, so uh -huh. it drew a little bit slower back, so it was a little bit better on not breaking paint. Yeah, is that one of the design implementations on I don't it? know if that was the intent, but that was one of the benefits. Yeah, gotcha. And you were saying that Greg actually came up with the idea for that? Yeah, Greg basically broke a bolt and then pieced it back together with a little spring, uh -huh. and it would take that delay to get back and forth. and. Uh, Showed it to Bobby and Bobby started making them. Was it the idea with the spring or similar to an OTP bolt or was it the idea of different heads? More like OTP bolt. More yeah. like an OTP bolt. So uh, Bob kind of came up with the different head thing. Yeah. Based on like, you know, everybody was trying different, different bolt designs. Different bolt designs, yeah. Why not just have the option all for three. all three? Yeah. It was smart. Uh, what about the cage? Why do you think Bob went with the cage on there? I don't know. And what was, what was your idea or what was your thoughts on the cage when you were using them? I thought the cage was okay in, as long as it worked, but sometimes it would vibrate out and then sometimes yeah. it would break off and just leave yeah. four jagged. Did it ever get smashed and your caulking rod gets stuck in there? Not for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, what about pneumatics that you guys would run? How, do you, how would you have them set up? Is that, does that look about how you had it? Yeah. Yeah, you'd have rocks. Yeah, just rock stabilizers, and then good three-way and a stock good ram. switch, stock uh, yeah. ram. Uh, what about barrels? Did you use die? Did you use lo Bob Long long shots? We do long shots. A few of us had boom sticks, but most of us were shooting long shots. Long shots. Yeah, and did you have a whole set, like different bore sizes? Um, no, we'd have like one or two. Yeah. Because, you know, they were, I don't know, 40 bucks or 50 bucks a piece, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, it wasn't until I went to die that I started getting different bore sizes. Yeah, gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, what about that stack? You said that's not original, right? Yeah, it's too tall for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what would you, you just had a Revy? Did yeah. Did you have a Revy or just a VL2000? Probably Revy, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, maybe a VL2000 when you started and then you got a Revy because Revy's Oh yeah, 2000. I had the old ones that you tape the battery on the bottom of it and the motor just stuck out. I had one of those to begin with. First it was just, you know, gravity and then yeah. it went to those. One thing about that frame is it's cut for an Intelli feed or the, the trigger actuated uh, Revy feed. Is that okay. something you did? No. <laughs> no? And you can see that's why that grip panel isn't screwed in because it's all cut out underneath. Huh, no, yeah. I have no idea. Hmm. Someone must have done that after you. Uh, but you did have that drop. That drop frame is what came stock on that. Yeah. Yeah. This right here? Yeah. Yeah. 
So uh, after after using the after using that auto cocker, you went down to L.A. and you played on the L.A. Ironmen. Yep. And with the L.A. Ironmen, uh, were you still using an auto cocker when you went down there? Right yeah, away. Yeah, for sure. I had uh, Brian Estefan of OTP custom build a one-off auto cocker just for me. Is that the green one that you still have? Yeah. 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 So that was made by him and then engraved by him or that guy. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I always thought that those bodies they look just like the G1 bodies. Yeah. So they must have been made by yeah. Brahim. Um, and then, so you still have that. And then, uh, what year did you guys move away from auto cockers? Uh, I have no idea what the day was. I mean, what year? I remember the move, but I don't remember. Yeah. You where went it was. to Angels, and then you went to uh, then you went to Matrix, the yep. matrices. And uh, tell me a little bit about the Matrix. Uh, you know, the whole Matrix thing that you were saying yesterday. Uh, basically, just that the Matrixes were a good gun, but they were kind of ugly and kind of heavy. So yeah. The shot characteristic was amazing, but they were also gas hogs. So yeah. there was uh, there was not enough strong points to just make it get past how ugly it was. Uh huh. So just as Iron as Ironman, we started using them. We started winning tournaments with them. We had a sponsorship program where the guys would get a gun for a tournament and sell it uh, yeah. to make some money back. Yeah. So that went well, and then the guns just kind of took off and ended up being the the die guns. Yeah, and you had uh, you had Ardvark. Uh modify them for you yeah we got a set from aardvark that were amazing yeah. yeah the squids yeah yeah and the only thing different he did is just hand precision went through with every mic every piece and every o-ring and those were the entities is yeah. that what they were called yeah. those were the squid ones yep yeah those are pretty wild pretty desirable now yeah um they made like a the like the whole squad got those right yeah there were like 13 or something yeah, you guys got so. it different, yeah. different color yep what color was yours initially black and red black and red with a squid on the side yeah. cool cool um, and Ugly then, gun. and then after that, you 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 went with like more of a stock body. Like, is that the DM3 when it was the DM3 um, um, with the Ironman logo on the side, or well, how did that come about? The when we cut them in half, did the Ironman ones? Yeah, the Ironman ones. We just uh, Brandon Lamerson had the idea of cutting off one of the sides of the guns and kind of plugging it up. So we just tried it. We went to uh, Dwayne's machine shop in San Jose and. Yeah. Cut a couple guns in half and threw some logos on there and just uh -huh. cut down the weight, made it a little bit softer, a little bit lighter. Cool, well. cool. Uh, and initially, Dwayne came up with, or Brandon came up with three different designs. You tried all three and then you settled on one? Yeah, I, th th I think we cut three different designs and just kind of showed everybody and everyone mm -hmm. just all picked the same ones. So we just wrote, went with that one. Yeah, one rumor that I've heard a lot is that someone continued making like knockoff Ironman bodies, and that's not something that you've ever heard of before. No, other than just the extra ones that Dwayne had that didn't make the cut for machining purposes or yeah, that but samples. I mean those those wouldn't be knockoffs; those are just prototypes, yeah. unproduced prototypes, yeah. production production samples. Um, but you've never seen anybody like make like matri Ironman matrixes with different tolerances or anything. No. Okay, cool, cool. Another kind of interesting story that you were kind of getting into was adding eyes to it. You don't have to go too deep into that. But the Matrix? Yeah. I mean, honestly, the Matrix shot really, really well, but they didn't have eyes, and mm -hmm. all the best guns at that time had eyes. So yeah. And this is just, like 2002, 2003? I guess, yeah. yeah. So then we just, I just cut a little channel in the bottle, dropped the eyes in, and it worked pretty well. Yeah, and you had uh, Dwayne uh, yeah. making D Wiz did it for us, yeah. It took us about two days to figure it out, and it worked cool. out well. Cool. Awesome. Anything else you want to talk about right now? No, I think it's super cool that you do this, and I hope you keep doing it. Awesome. Thanks, Rich. Thank you. Yeah.